These 49 charts can tell you a lot about how you're most likely going to die. It's worth mentioning that cause of death data has only been thoroughly tracked with global consistency in a significant way for around 40 years, but we'll touch on that later. So what do we know for sure? For one thing, some of the things which preoccupy the public are less of a danger than other things which are at times overlooked. For example, more than twice as many people die from exposure to extreme temperatures than as a result of extremist terrorism. Consider also that more people died from gun-related suicides than gun-related homicides in the US. And that only 3% of gun-related deaths in the US are accidental in nature. In fact, globally, suicide nearly doubled homicide as the underlying cause of death in 2017. Perhaps not surprising if you're a doctor, but probably to the rest of us, is that heart disease took more lives around the world than natural disasters, terrorism, fire, drug abuse, drowning, Parkinson's, homicide, malaria, suicide, HIV AIDS, traffic accidents, liver disease, diabetes and cancer combined. The World Health Organization estimates that over 17 million people die every year from heart disease, and it's been the number one killer in the United States since 1921. Before then, pneumonia and tuberculosis often grappled for the top spot. But as we developed better treatments for infectious diseases in the early 20th century, people began to live longer. Even with the deadly 1918 H1N1 pandemic disrupting the trend, the average life expectancy in the US rose from around 47 to 60 years of age by 1930. This phenomenon, along with many other factors including lifestyle, diet, and changing industries, led to an increase in cardiovascular disease, which has constituted the most significant epidemic of the 20th century. Although heart disease has been number one for 100 years now, entirely new causes have arrived. Which brings us to another thing that we know for sure. The way we die is always changing. Over the last 20 years in particular, some major shifts have taken place. Since the year 2000, Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia climbed from the 20th leading cause up to 7th in 2019. While HIV AIDS has fallen from 8th to 19th in the same time frame. And in just the last 24 months, a radical shift occurred that no one could have missed. COVID-19 ended the year 2020 as the third leading cause of death in the United States. Provisional data shows COVID-19 is currently the number one leading cause in 2021, displacing heart disease at the top of the list for the first time in a century. Technology, industry and lifestyle also play large roles in shaping our deaths. In the Americas, drug abuse related deaths nearly tripled in the last two decades. Globally, diabetes has overtaken traffic accidents during that time as well. And one other technology-related cause of death may surprise you. Between 2011 and 2017, selfie-related accidents killed five times more people than shark attacks globally. One strikingly positive change has been in infant mortality. Globally, the under-5 mortality rate declined 59% between 1990 and 2020 but lower-income countries still experience far more under five deaths than wealthier countries. The risk of dying before the fifth birthday is about 70 times higher for a child born in the highest mortality country versus the lowest mortality country. And this is where we begin to uncover perhaps the thing we can be most certain of. Where you're born goes a long way in determining how you will die and how long you will live, largely by virtue of your country's relative wealth. The World Bank categorizes countries into four tiers of income groups, low, lower middle, upper middle, and high income economies. Low and lower middle income countries are still hit hard by diseases that the wealthier countries have largely eliminated. For low income countries, diarrheal diseases, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS are all among the leading causes of death, none of which appear in the top 10 for countries in the high income category. Upper middle and high income countries' populations, by contrast, are more likely to die from non-communicable causes, more commonly associated with longer lifespans. And the difference in lifespans between income groups could not be more clear. In 2019, the leading cause of death in low-income nations was neonatal conditions. That means complications at birth or in infancy that could not be overcome. For high income countries, neonatal conditions once again placed outside the top 10. But the wealth and health gap doesn't just exist between nations, it's also a clear divide within them. One study found that on average, the wealthiest American man lives 15 years longer than the poorest, while the wealthiest woman in the US lives 10 years longer. 
while in Ghana, a child born to one of the wealthiest families is three times more likely to live beyond five years of age than a child born to one of the poorest families. So while a quick glance at global statistics might make it seem as though it's where you're born that decides how long you will live, a deeper look suggests that your wealth has a big part to play. Which brings us to one final thing that we know for sure about how we die, which is that we don't know everything. The first notable attempt to classify global causes of death was the International List of Causes of Death, introduced in 1893. As of 1999, the 10th revision is distributed to 194 nations by the World Health Organization. Of the 194 member states who received the ICD-10 codes from the World Health Organization, only 115 of them had any form of official vital statistics registry that recorded and reported those codes. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation estimates that less than half of the world's population has their birth and death recorded in a vital registration system. The poorest, the homeless and other marginalised groups around the world are often underreported, leaving the causes and numbers of their deaths unknown.